am so glad that you're with me. Sorry, I was playing a little bit of music. We are taking a field trip right now. Now, I know what you're thinking, Victoria. We are virtual. We cannot take a field trip. We're not allowed to go places just yet. Not to mention, we're all in different places. Well, you're right. We're going to go to one of my favorite places for this art lesson uh, today. And it's uh, Valley Park off of Kirk Road. It's just a small little park. And I'm going to teach some of this art lesson from the park. Because there are so many interesting textures there. And it's just a beautiful place to visit. It's also free to go to. Just if you're looking for a place to go. So we're in the car and I figure while I'm in my Jeep, I might as well give you a little bit of information before we get to the park. We are going to be doing rubbings this week. And you can do rubbings anywhere. You can do rubbings from nature. You can do rubbings around your house. The only thing you need is crowns work. I think I feel best, but you can use colored pencils. You can even use a regular pencil. That's up to you. Um, I like to use crowns when I do my rubbings and you need paper. And so for this exercise, I gave you a bunch of that newsprint paper. So that paper that's kind of light, you can use any type of paper, of course. Um, I just found that the lighter paper sometimes works a little bit better for some of these. So that's up to you. Or if you want to do more, you can use your own paper. Doesn't matter as long as you have something to write with and write on. And rubbings are just rub it. You take the crown and you rub over something and you get the texture. So what is texture? Texture is anything that you can feel. Anything that has a bump or a ridge. Is it soft? Is it fluffy? Is it hard? Thinking of Ruffles potato chips. Not good for rubbing. They'll fall apart. Uh, but whatever it is, you want to make sure it has textures, texture. And for rubbings, when you're doing it with a crayon, you probably want something that's of a harder surface, like tile. Um, I've even done this on Legos. Um, put the paper over the Lego or the bottom of a shoe. We're going to go out in nature. We're going to find some rubbing. People have been doing rubbings for a very long time. They It dates back to as early as 2000, 200 AD, I think is the last. Sorry, I almost said 2000. 200 AD and they found that it's used a, it was used a lot back then in uh, some of the Asian countries they would use rubbings and it was any type of wax that they had at the time um, to find old uh, calligraphy old writing and record it so if it was on a stone or a harder surface and it was etched in they could make a recording of it this is long before they had a camera anything to take a picture of it they would just get any surface charcoal, put a piece of paper. Paper was different than what we have today. It was usually made from a tree, same as today in that sense, but it was almost like slivers of uh, wood woven together as opposed to something as softer that we write on today. Um, that's a whole nother lesson. But they would do these rubbings, and then they found that even in Japan, some of the fishermen would use rubbings to record the size of the fish that they found or they caught and where they found it. So they were using rubbings to record data. There are um, naturists that still do rubbings of leaves to identify their leaves and keep it into a nature journal. And there are artists that do rubbings today. Surprisingly, they make some really big money from these rubbings. I'll show you a picture of that. I'm going to insert it right about here. Give it a little second. But that is a whole wall somebody paid to put up of rubbings of different manhole covers. Can you believe it? Somebody paid somebody to rub manhole covers. And then they made it into a wallpaper. Crazy! But it's true. You can use this for all sorts of things. For a recording, for an abstract piece. You can take these and then build something else or just keep it as a rubbing and document something. So right now, let me finish driving and I'll show you how to do this once we get to the park. See you in a minute. I'm going to flip this camera over and you can take a drive with me.
So in my bag today, I have my paper, I have crayons, I also brought colored pencils if I want them, um, just so I have my options. Usually I would have tape, I forgot to bring tape, sometimes it helps to tape down your paper to a surface, so tape might be helpful. And the other thing that I'm going to bring along, other than you and the camera, is a container. And this container I'm going to use to collect small rocks that I might find, or stones. You're going to need those for next week's lesson. So you don't need stones or rocks for this week's lesson. They have to be somewhat tiny, small, um, anywhere from probably like a half dollar to size um, to smaller. I would probably stick with like a quarter size uh, stone and smaller, but it could go up to like a half dollar. So I have a container I'm reusing from Drink Mix to put the stones in. So let's get going into the park and see what we can find. By the way, did you notice the people doing Tai Chi with, uh, it looks like almost like swords on the way in? That was so cool. I didn't expect to see that. You never know what you're going to find when you're out and about. So come with me. Let's see what textures we can find on this walk. So I found the first thing that I want to try to get a rubbing on. And it's this sign right here. It says of the Valley Garden. This is where we are. And so I'm going to document that I was here by doing a rubbing. So I'm just going to place my paper. This is where the tape would come in really handy to hold it down. But I'm just going to use my hand. And then I'm going to just take my crayon. And I am going to rub right over all of these letters. I really want to get the name of the park. I have to take some around it. And I'm just going back and forth with my crown. I find some letters. There it says Beepot. right on something that isn't mine, so I'm being very careful. There we go. I can go over this with watercolor. I can go back in. So I'm just moving or you add another person to hold in place. our first rubbing done documenting where we were just like the people in Asia originally who were doing rubbings to see different styles of writing in that calligraphy style so I was getting ready to pack up and put my paper away and find another location after doing the Valley Park sign and I noticed the texture right here of the stone. So I'm going to get a piece of paper out and for this one I took the, it was, I found a purple crown, my notebook there, and I found this purple crown. It was broken in my son's crown uh, box and I took off the paper and I'm not going to hold it like a pencil for this rubbing. I'm going to put it on its side. A lot of times we'll do this for a background. So I'm rubbing and I'm getting the texture of the stone itself. I'm not seeing the lines necessarily where they come apart. So that you can do as another texture, but I might even go over it then a little bit like a pencil, like we normally hold, see if I can get other 
texture lines as well. So I am coming together and getting some of these lines right in here. So I can see that that's like a line right there. This is a line. There's a definite line here where the cement is and the start of another stone. So, a bunch right in there. Some of this. So I can see where it comes up. So I'm getting sort of lines. What I'm going to do next is add some detail into this. So this is the lines, it's pretty purple, you can see, but I can see that this is where one stone was. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna darken some of the area where the stone was, because again, you can see that my line was going up here. I really wanna have that texture where some of these stones were. You can go in here color it this way and then I'm really getting sort of that white line there a white line so now I have texture from the stonework right where the sign was so there you go so you can see there's lines but I also am getting in some texture from the stone now let's try packing up the paper and finding another location so we've already found two and I haven't gone that far let's see So I found this cement and it looks really cool. So I am going to do, I think this will be the last rubbing and then I'm gonna get home. So when I get home, I'll just show you some of the rubbings I did at my house and some of the things I found around. So you can do these out in nature. You can do these rubbings for your assignment around the city. You can go anywhere to get these done. So you don't have to look farther than your house to find rubbings. I'm just rubbing along. Now these rubbings I'm doing quick, but you can definitely take your time with them. I was reading a little bit about this and they said a good rubbing for like a real art piece takes 30 minutes or so because people really work and maybe say just really concentrate on that area just to get a lot of detail. I'm going a little quicker just to show you and give you some examples. You can see if I concentrate on this area how much detail I'm able to pull up. Now if I wanted to do the whole thing it would take me a lot longer. So actually I'm going to sit here I'm going to do a little bit more detail on this and next time you see me I will be at my house and I'll show you a few more things that I did there. So I will see you soon.
right, so as promised, we are back at my house. Our adventure is over for today, but I wanted to show you a few other samples of work I did. Um, and these were objects that I found right in the house. I never left the house to find them. So this is something you can do if you can't get to a park or if you can't go outside in the city. So I just flip this over here. And you can see right here, this was a plate from Legos. So one of those bases. This was my own shoe. And then I looked over, there was my son's shoe. So you could see the pattern is different. And again, did it the same way I did the trees and nature and the stones just took my crown and rubbed over it this one was bathroom tile and then i made a border using one of the bathroom tiles and i didn't think about it hold on that thought we're going to come back to this one hold on i'm going to come back to this in a second so i can flip the paper to show you another example this was another example of bathroom tile in a different bathroom. This one I used by using my crown the same way as usual, like, a, like I would hold a pencil. And this way I did a rubbing. So I don't know if you can see that. So this is another one. This is using um, and holding the crown like a pencil. And this one is using it on its side doing a rubbing where it's a little bit lighter. So I wanted to show you that example. And again, that came from my bathroom. And then this is, whoa. This is the last one that I was working on. And you can see it says pick flowers. I don't know if you caught at the beginning of the video when I was walking and looking for texture, there was a sign and it actually told us not to pick flowers. I chose not to um, get the texture and do the rubbing from the whole sign. I just chose two words, pick flowers. But now I'm thinking about this design and how I did the border and made a frame out of it. Never thought I'd do this, but Hold on, we're gonna have finish this video upstairs in my house and I'm gonna teach from a room I never thought I'd talk, I would teach from. Okay, this is definitely not a spot that I ever thought I would teach from, ever. But let's do it. So what, why we're in my bathroom, I'm teaching from my bathroom right now, Hi. Um, it's because of this top. And I noticed that it had a pattern to it. This is how I made that frame that I just showed you downstairs. So, I'm gonna use this to show you how to make that pattern using the, using this tile and do a rubbing to finish this one off. Now here's the thing to keep in mind, if you're gonna do something like this and it's on a wall, it's not your house, it's your parents' house, it's your family's house, it's the house that you live at, you wanna make sure you have permission to do it because you don't wanna get any crown or any uh, colored pencil on their wall or ruin something. This is my house. Tori, do you have permission? I give myself permission. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna take my picture and I'm gonna use this to make a frame around my work. I'm kind of angle it the best that I can. Starting here. Now I notice it'll go over a little, so that's okay. I'm not gonna do the whole one up here. So I'll do the start up here. And use the line of the tile to kind of keep it straight as I can. Folding it again, tape would come in helpful over. I'm not going to go over the words, so I'm going to be careful not to get that part, but I'm going to come up in here, get in the color. Real careful. And here, get in the color. And that part over the tape. Line this up so it goes over a little more. This way, get this part of it. Go over a little, that's okay. You can see that I'm getting that pattern forming. Now here's the trick. How am I gonna get it on the side? All I'm gonna do is flip my paper, figure out where that S is, make sure it's underneath. And line up the paper the best I can. I'm just eyeballing it. Cross, and I'm going to do the same thing. Make that pattern. Pick flowers. I used it by doing three different rubbings. I combined together, combined color. This did take me a while to finish. Completed it in my bathroom. Why not? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, have a fun time doing this lesson. You can explore your house. You can explore the neighborhood you live in. You can go to a park 
Wherever you are, all this takes is colored pencils, crayons, and some paper. Maybe another set of hands to hold it up or tape. Again, if it's not a surface that you own, make sure you have permission to use it. I'm gonna leave my bathroom now, and I am gonna get ready for my other lessons this week. Have a great time, show me your work, send it to me, either um, attach it to this lesson or send it to me on email. There's also gonna be some links for other things that you can do with your um, artwork. Till then, I will talk to you soon. Make sure to collect those rocks next week. You're gonna need rocks, the smaller colored paper, and something to glue them on to the paper with. Till then, adios, have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.